All right, so I have my uh, bottom bracket in. These are um, angular uh, bottom bracket, uh, meant for meant for this SRAM uh, GXP style uh, bottom bracket. Uh, SRAM Truvative, I think it is. And what it is, it's a little bit different from other other designs. What it is is um, it's a twenty four slash twenty two uh, diameter spindle. So the spindle on the drive side is 24 and over here it's 22. Okay. So, so I have my cranks here and my bottom bracket. So the bottom bracket came with, with, you know, this, this set of, uh, this is the seal. This is the seal where, where the bottom bracket is right here, right? On both sides. So there's that. Then there's, um, so it's kind of weird how one seal has uh, the rubber. So this is the outside and this is the inside. This is the, this is the bearing side. On the other side, that's the bearing side, right? Bearing side and this is the outside. And I believe this is the 22 side and this is the 24 side. Let's see, let's see if it's, uh, yeah, that's right. So you can see the metal on the inside here. So that's this is the smaller diameter. So that's 22, that's 24. I think all these, all these spacers here are, uh, or shims, shims or spacers, whatever you want to call them. These are all 24, I believe. Let's see. Yep, it looks like it. Yep, so this, these are all 24s. And this one, this is the, uh, so this is the thing that's different from other bottom bracket designs. Is that this, the GPX, or is it GPX or GXP? I think it's GXP. They use a uh, spring washer this is a spring washer this is a wavy washer so it's like a spring you use that instead of a preload like on the for example SRAM uses you know, the SRAM dub uh, bottom bracket it has that uh, it has that little tensioner a little tensioner that you that you spin to to you know to preload the uh, the uh, the bearings this one doesn't have that this one uses this this spring to preload the bearings so so that's different uh, let's see so I'm not sure as far as what spacing I need on here. So I know this is the small side, and this is the small side. So those two are the small side, which is, I think it's on this side, right? It's on the, the non-drive side. Oh it's, oh, it's on the drive side. Is it drive side? The heck? I thought this was 22 and this is 24. So let me actually, let me look at this again one more time. So I know this is the smaller one. Oh. No, the spring is not on the 22 side, it's on the 24 side. So the spring is bigger. So the spring is bigger. Okay, it's 24. So so I think the spring goes over like so. On the um, on the drive side. I think it's like that. And from there, you have whatever, whatever shim, right? With the various shims you have. Uh, this spindle here I have is a, uh, let me see, what's the spindle length? Let's just say. So this is a Canfield, Canfield Brothers. Um, Canfield 155 crank arm. But it doesn't say what the, what the spindle length is. I think the spindle, the spindle, when I, if I can remember when I bought it, I ordered it for a uh, boost. So it should be a boost, it's meant for boost. Okay, it doesn't, okay, Canfield doesn't have any, uh, Anything that tells you what's what, and actually it comes with this thing. This is the bottom bracket spacer, right? The can feel it comes with this. This is the bottom bracket spacer because the diameter is pretty big. Look at that. This is actually, it looks, it feels like, it looks like steel. Yeah, this looks like steel. It doesn't look like aluminum to me. So obviously this, this is a lot bigger. So that's actually the bottom bracket cup. So you have the bottom bracket cup. This would go in between the frame and the bottom bracket cup. So I might, I'm not sure if I need this or not. We'll see. Uh, we'll see once I put all this. What I have to basically I, what I'm what I have to figure out now is the chain line uh, and this bike. My Atherton, this new bike I got. Atherton says that the the chain line for this bike is a, uh, a 55. So that's basically that's that's super boost spacing. Because the boost spacing is 52. Super boost is between, I think, 55 and 57. 
uh, and boost is about 52, maybe as much as 54, somewhere around there. So if this is 55 to 57, that means it would be a boost spacing. So I might actually have to to use these uh, these spacers because these spacers look like they are about two millimeters each. I need to get my calipers and check. And, uh, so I might have to use this uh, in between the, the frame and the bottom bracket cup. Uh, but anyways, so let's look at that. Let's, let me grab my tools. Okay, so I got my calipers. Let's see what the size is right here. Let's zoom it out. This is, oh, two and a half. Two and a half millimeters, basically. 245, which is basically two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. So two and a half. That's pretty big. So that's pretty big. Uh, that means it's five millimeters apart. Uh, oh, or two and a half on each side. Actually, that would that would fit. If this right now is uh, boost, 52, two and a half out, that would be 52, 53, 54, 54 and a half, about 55, pretty close. So actually, yeah, I might I might have to use these uh, these ones, but I might not actually use these ones because my my uh, my wheel wheel manufacturer bottom bracket, you know, it came with this. This is probably what it comes with, but it also came with this packet. I didn't I didn't realize it came with this packet. So it came with this as well, and this basic kit right here, two and a half, and whatever, whatever, you know, the different shims, right? Different spacers there. So I might use that because this, I think this is steel and this is aluminum. I'd rather put the aluminum on, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, but if I have to use both of them, I guess I could just use these. So it doesn't really matter. But anyways, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it without the spacers first. Let's see if I can get the chain line proper. Uh, it doesn't look like it because because the the chain stay right here is pretty out out there, right? So I don't think the fifty two would would have enough clearance for the for the chain stay here because of the you know because of the suspension the suspension design on here. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. All right, so I think I figured out the spacing on here. So I'm using a so remember this kit. This bottom bracket kit comes with the uh, with a bunch of little spacers, uh, two half millimeters and two one millimeter. So it looks like the one millimeter on this on. So you have the spring, the spring washer, the one millimeter, and you have your uh, um, you know your seal, right? The bottom bracket dust seal, bearing dust seal, and so that's on that's on the drive side and the, on the non drive side, I put uh, the half millimeter. Um, spacer on it and it seems to uh, fit pretty well and it's, there's a certain amount of uh, preload in there once I put it on once I put it on and I spin it I could feel I could feel a little bit of a preload uh, so that's that feels about right uh, when, you, when you don't tighten it yet it spins very freely like like, like the bearing's not preloaded then you tighten it up and you can feel a little bit of resistance and that's that's just about right. And I tried uh I tried two two of the one millimeter washers on this side. Uh on this side. And it was uh it was even more resistance and I'm like, oh that's probably maybe a little bit too much preload. So you only want just a tiny bit of preload and, and then uh, that should be good enough. Maybe uh once it breaks in, then you go back to it and and you know, free spin again. Take the chain off and free spin it again, and feel it. See if it's see if it how it spins. If there's if you, there's still, still a little bit of preload, and it should be fine. And that's all you need. You know, you don't need a whole bunch of preload because a lot too much preload will actually uh, wear out the bearings uh, prematurely. And enough. And if you don't have any preload at all, that also wears out the bearings too. Because because uh, you have to have a certain amount of preload on there. It's because if it's just um, sloppy, uh, as 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 you know, as you ride and pedal and stuff. There's a bunch of pressure on there and it moves around uh, because of the sloppiness it, it moves around more so so that actually wears out bearings faster as well mm -hmm. so both reasons and remember this is an angler this is an angler bearing so so the angler bearings they need a certain amount of preload as well um so okay so i think that's it for for this uh this video